Welcome to the Genie and Knack video series. The topic of this video will be implementing Zero Trust, specifically how to implement Zero Trust Phase 1 in just 15 minutes. Why should organizations consider Zero Trust? The evidence is everywhere and mounting. Most security professionals today agree organizations must adopt a Zero Trust model. Multiple high-profile data breaches continue to be reported, oftentimes involving well-intentioned employees just completing day-to-day -day tasks. Any security model that allows devices to connect to the network without explicit permission or allows devices to move laterally within the network without restricted access leaves an organization vulnerable. These are some of the reasons a zero-trust model should be adopted. No device should be trusted including internal devices. Allowing internal devices to connect to the network without explicit permission can result in data breaches. One example of this is the recent high-level data breach noted at NASA with a Raspberry Pi device connected by an employee. A vulnerability on the device was exploited and a data breach occurred while the device was connected to the network. A subsequent audit revealed that several other devices were connected to the network that system administrators were not aware of. This boils down to a lack of visibility on the network and proper controls, including a zero trust model. One of the challenges of maintaining full visibility and control has been the perception that this needs to be a manual process and is very human intensive. The result is typically an always trust then verify model. This model, unlike a zero trust model, resulted in this data breach. What is the zero trust model? Although there can be many layers to implementation, at its most basic level, zero trust means exactly what it sounds like. Don't trust anything or anyone on the network, and when you do, always allow as little access as possible. Also, you want to make sure you monitor and adapt if needed. There are many common characteristics to the zero trust architecture. Typically it assumes no actors or systems are trusted by default. It employs a never trust always verify strategy. Everything must be verified before granting network access. It leverages micro segmentation for granular access. It grants least privilege required and continually monitors actors and systems on the network to ensure adaptive controls adjust privilege as required if needed. The first few characteristics of a zero trust architecture can be implemented as a phase one. The first step is very simple. Stop trusting by default. In other words, lock down the network from the inside unless explicitly permitted. The steps to follow will ensure everything is verified before granting access, which is the foundation of zero trust. Always follow best practices. The steps to follow will include switching an installed Genie and NAC network sensor from passive to active mode. This means policy enforcement will be active and untrusted unknown devices will be blocked from the network. Whenever enabling a new network security technology, Always understand your environment and always use a test network. To implement Zero Trust Phase 1 in just 15 minutes, we will be following these steps. First, we'll be installing a Genie and NAC virtual network sensor. This step takes approximately 10 minutes. There is a link provided on our YouTube channel which shows the instructions of how to install the sensor. Once installed, we will be viewing the node status in the dashboard. After that, we will be switching the new node policy on the sensor from allow to deny, effectively enabling zero trust. And finally, we will verify with the test device that it has no access when connecting to the network. Ready? Let's get started. In previous steps, we covered how to install a virtual network sensor in under 10 minutes and link it to a cloud-based policy server. In this video, 
we will demonstrate how to switch that sensor to a zero trust mode. In other words, not allow any new devices on the network without explicitly permitting them to join the network. Here we're looking at the main dashboard view of the cloud policy server. Note that it has one network sensor up and operational. The network sensor itself has detected 10 nodes. Zero of the 10 nodes are actually blocked for a failed policy. Nine of the 10 nodes are matching on blocking exceptions, which means they have previously been allowed to access the network. And one device, which is the device I am testing on now, is falling under the default policy which presently, because we're set to allow network access, has full network access. Switching to the node management view, we will see a list of these nodes. Again, blocking exceptions are all the devices that have previously been allowed on the network explicitly. The sensor is listed here for which no policies apply. And at the bottom, we have the device we are testing on. That device is matching on the default policy, which as of right now is set to allow. The next steps will show you how to change this from allow to deny for new nodes that join the network. To change the default status of the sensor from allow to deny for new nodes joining the network, we will go to system, sensor, edit sensor settings, and we will change the new node policy from allow to deny Mac and update. At this point we've changed the default mode and new nodes joining the network will not be allowed network access unless explicitly permitted. To demonstrate this we will be taking the node we are testing on and we will be removing this node from the system. The node will then be rediscovered and should be blocked from network access. Before doing so, we have two ping tests up and running, which are actually pinging a website and pinging a Google, Google DNS server, which is confirming the device presently has access. Also a couple of web pages that we'll be using to demonstrate Captive Portal. Now we'll perform the step of removing the node from the network by selecting the node under task, there is a remove node option. As you can see, that node has been removed from the network. Once the node is rediscovered, it'll actually match on the new default policy for new nodes, which is to block new nodes from the network. A refresh shows that this node has been redetected. The node is also showing up as blocked. Also, if we look at the main dashboard view, this is now updated as well. So one out of 10 nodes is actually blocked for a failed enforcement policy. And the node that was previously listed under the default policy, which is the node we're on now, is now showing up as denied by IP or MAC address. Note that I have explicitly for testing purposes allowed access to the cloud-based policy server and also allowed access to DNS so captive portal pages will display but denied all of their network access. To validate our network access has been denied, we can now see that the ping tests are failing. Now we will refresh some web pages. Confirming that network access has been denied, we now see the captive portal, which is, which is identifying this device as an unauthorized device, both for an SSL and a non-SSL website. Now, assuming that the network administrator would now like to list this device as an authorized device, it is very easy to do so. By selecting the node and going into the details for the node, this node can be allowed access 
by going to policy and switching deny Mac to allow Mac and clicking update. If we go back to node management, we'll now see that this device is back into the default policy and also from the main dashboard view we now see 0 of 10 nodes are blocked and it is also back in the default policy from the denied policy it was previously in. Network access has also been restored. We'll confirm by refreshing the web pages. Both web pages are now accessible. This is all with no network integration at all. This is using ARP enforcement, meaning there is a zero touch configuration on the network. To permanently move our test node to the blocking exceptions group under node management, we can select the node and edit the node group settings. There, we can use the add to no group option by MAC address and add this device to the blocking exceptions group like all of the previously authorized devices. Once we save that and apply, we now see that this device is part of the blocking exceptions group. In other words, as an administrator, I have actually allowed this device on and now for future connections to the network for this device, it will not fail any enforcement policy. However, any other new device not explicitly listed here will fail for policy and be blocked from network access. So those are the steps required to switch to phase one of a zero trust model. In future videos, we will cover node groups, uh, which allow you to group these devices together for categorization based on device type, compliance status, location, ownership, or other criteria, and also to implement micro-segmentation based on those groups. This concludes the Genie and NAC video series implementing Zero Trust Phase 1 in 15 minutes. Be sure to visit genians.com for additional information, including upcoming video series on micro-segmentation.